Welcome everyone. I am Pat Beam, President of the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing Alumni Association Board. I am so happy to welcome each and every one of you, alumni, alumni award honorees, faculty, staff, students, and friends of the FPB School of Nursing to our 2020 Alumni Awards celebration. It is a pleasure to represent the Alumni Association today. The Alumni Association is much more than the board. It is each and every FPB alum. As a board, our goal is to use the association to engage and support not only our, our fellow alumni, but our current FPB students as well. We do that through research awards, student gifts, and we do it today through the recognition of excellence in our field. Today, we take time to recognize four outstanding nurse professionals in our FPB alumni community. Now, I would like to introduce Dean Carol Muso, the 13th Dean of the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing, a double alumni of Case Western Reserve University, and a distinguished nurse researcher at the university. Please welcome Dean Carol Musa. Thank you, Pat, and welcome to all alumni, honorees, and guests. Though we would have preferred to hand these awards to you in person at our wonderful health education campus, I'm delighted that we were able to add some new components to this ceremony that will make it personal and meaningful to our award winners. I'm also very happy that we are not limited by time, location, or space, and that we have alumni, family, friends, and colleagues from across the nation and the world able to attend. This is a special event to me as an alum and now Dean of the School of Nursing because it's a celebration of all of you, what you've accomplished as individuals in our profession and in your lives, as well as what we have achieved together as nurse leaders. FPB alumni make spectacular contributions to nursing and lead impressive lives. They're self-reliant as a matter of principle and collaborative as a matter of course. FPB alumni go about pursuits with great intelligence, a sense of fairness, determination, humor, perspective, and deep compassion. With this, they impact research, education, all facets of nursing practice and healthcare, our society and the world. Today, we recognize four exceptional alumni who have been brought to our attention because they were nominated by their peers for the 2020 Francis Payne Bolton Alumni Association Awards. Their respective professional and personal journeys represent diversity of experience and a dedication to human well-being that are the hallmarks of the nursing profession. I encourage you to read their bios in the program that is linked to the Alumni Association Award winners page of our website. These winners have done so much for their communities and the nursing profession. We are pleased that our award winners could join us today to receive their awards and to personally share their stories with you. Pat Beam will now present our awards. Dr. Pamela Slavin Lee is the Senior Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, Associate Dean for Student Affairs, and Clinical Associate Professor at George Washington University School of Nursing. She was nominated for this award by Pamela Jeffries, a professor of nursing and the Dean of George Washington University School of Nursing. Dr. Slavin Lee is a certified healthcare simulation educator, providing curricular support, leadership, and coordination of on-campus simulation-based learning events. In her nomination letter, Dr. Jeffries wrote, Dr. Slavin Lee demonstrated an exceptional ability to inspire creative, practical, and efficient solutions for the challenges imposed by the distance education for nurse practitioner programs. She fostered significant growth of the online national NP program, and her exemplary foundational work there continues to facilitate success of the family nurse practitioner track and mitigate the challenges of educating large student cohorts. 
Dr. Slavin Lee designed and implemented a clinical placement model that empowers NP students to select clinical sites based upon the potential of the site to provide opportunities which meet clinical objectives and support clinical competencies. As a result of this new model, more than 95% of all student-initiated placements are in alignment with the course objectives and clinical competencies. She champions faculty development initiatives and mandated Quality Matters training. As a result of these efforts, 37 George Washington nursing faculty and staff members now hold a certification in applying the Quality Matters rubric. She has a passion for utilizing simulation-based learning to educate MP students and has made significant contributions not only to NP education, but also to the overall simulation-based learning mission at George Washington University Nursing. This pioneering work enabled faculty to conduct groundbreaking education research regarding social determinants of health. Dr. Slavin Lee is a brilliant nurse educator and skilled higher education administrator who has demonstrated tremendous potential to be a trailblazer in both the nursing and healthcare professions. Her efforts are making a difference in the larger nursing education profession. She is also a founding board member of Reese Across America, a nonprofit organization with a mission of preserving the memories of fallen U.S. service members, honoring those who currently serve and teaching the value of freedom. She and her husband, Lieutenant Colonel Ho K. Lee, U.S. Marine Corps, live in Haymarket, Virginia with their three sons. Please welcome Dr. Pamela Slavin Lee, DNP, Class of 2008, recipient of the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing Alumni Association Young Alumni Award for Excellence. Hello, everyone. I'm incredibly honored to be this year's recipient of the Young Alumni Award for Excellence. I'm thrilled to be included in such a distinguished group of alumni and awardees, and I'm delighted to be back, even if only virtually. Since I received notification of my selection for this award, I've spent some time reflecting on how my experience at Case truly influenced the trajectory of my life. It all started with my DNP project, the title of which was Emotional Distress and Health Risk Behaviors of the Mothers of United States Marines. At the time, I was working at a primary care clinic in rural Maine, traveling back and forth to Cleveland to complete my coursework. I was inspired by the mothers of service members that I had an opportunity to care for in the community where I grew up. I was also engaged to my husband, who was still an active duty Marine. Dr. Joyce Fitzpatrick was the chair of my DNP project, and she, of course, advised that I needed a subject matter expert, someone with expertise in military families and this type of research. She suggested that I reach out to Dr. Diane Padden at the Uniformed Services University for the Health Sciences. I did not know Dr. Diane Patton, and I was not familiar with the Uniformed Services University. But I soon found myself with more data than I knew what to do with, but I had also gained a lifelong friend and mentor in Dr. Diane Patton. Because of my connection with Dr. Patton and my brand new Case Western DNP degree, I was able to secure a teaching position at the Uniformed Services University. That's something I'm incredibly proud of. Um, it was an incredible privilege. And I'll always be proud of that. And so began my career in the academy. My Case DNP degree opened many doors for me that I know would not have otherwise been opened. And so I began my Case journey as an FNP working in a rural primary care clinic, and I never intended to leave uh, clinical practice. 
but Case truly altered my course and prepared me for many future opportunities. This award is intended for those who've made contributions to nursing. I know that any contributions that I may have made to nursing since my time at Case have been in partnership with my friends, colleagues, and mentors in nursing education. And my professional accomplishments would not be possible or truly meaningful without the support of my family, my husband, and my three boys. I thank all of them, and I thank you, the Alumni Association, for this incredible award recognition. Thank you so much. Good evening. I'm Pamela Jeffries, Dean of the George Washington University School of Nursing. On behalf of our faculty, staff, students, and alumni, I am thrilled to congratulate Dr. Pamela Slavin Lee, our Senior Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, as the recipient of the 2020 Young Alumni Award for Excellence. In her 12 years in the profession since graduating with her DMP from the Case Western Francis Bain Bolton School of Nursing, she has quickly risen through the ranks of academic nursing leadership while also becoming a national leader in graduate simulations. Her selection as the recipient for this prestigious award not only depicts her significant contributions to the profession thus far, but also her continued promise as a national nursing education leader. With this, congratulations, Pam. We could not be more excited to celebrate this major accomplishment with you. Raise high. Congratulations on being named Outstanding Young Alumni. Our relationship began with a shared passion for military families and grew as we became colleagues teaching NP students. You have excelled as an academician and leader in NP education. I am so privileged and honored to call you colleague and friend. Congratulations and best wishes for continued success. Hi, I'm Paula Forsyth, Chair of the Alumni Awards Committee. Congratulations, Pamela, for being selected by your alumni peers to be the recipient of the 2020 Young Alumni Award. Your nursing career has been exemplary with significant educational contributions to the profession. Today, your colleagues recognize and say thank you for your contributions to nursing and for role modeling the attributes and strengths of an FPB nursing education. Congratulations. Dr. Nancy Wagner is Chair and Professor in the Youngstown State University Department of Nursing. She was nominated for this award by Cynthia Shields, Associate Professor and BSN Program Coordinator for Youngstown State. Dr. Wagner has had a lifelong career and passion for the nursing profession and nursing education. Her professional career began at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, where she worked with children with cystic fibrosis and their families. She has been a faculty member at YSU for over 25 years, and since 2013 has held the leadership position in the Department of Nursing. In her nomination letter, Cynthia Shields described Dr. Wagner as a skillful educator an administrator, a dynamic problem solver, and a key motivator in the progression of YSU's nursing program. She was instrumental in the creation of the state-of-the-art John and Dorothy Masternick Nursing Simulation Lab for nursing students at all levels, led to the development of the YSU online RNBSN program, and has led to the proposal development for the DMP program for nurse anesthesia students, which has since been approved for classes beginning in May of 2021. In addition, Dr. Wagner has accompanied nursing students on medical missions to Mexico and coordinated a study abroad experience to Israel where the students participated in opportunities at the Galilee Medical Center and Hadassah Medical Organization in Jerusalem. 
Dr. Wagner's research focuses on the impact of scenario simulation, transcultural nursing, and disadvantaged mothers and infants. She has presented her work at national and international conferences. Nancy has received the Chi Chapter Sigma Theta Ta Award for Leadership, the prestigious Youngstown State University Watson Merit Award for Leadership, and the Distinguished Professor Award for Service. She is married to Barry Wagner, and they are the proud parents of two adult sons. Please welcome Dr. Nancy Wagner, DMP Class of 2009, recipient of the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing Alumni Association Award for Excellence. Good evening. And many thanks to the Francis Payne Bolton Alumni Award Committee for recognizing me for the Award for Excellence. I am truly honored, especially during this special 2020 Year of the Nurse. Prior to enrolling in the DNP program at Case, it had been over 20 years since I had been a master's student. As I began my journey taking doctoral classes, it didn't take long to once again love the learning environment. The courses and discussion energized my teaching and ultimately influenced my students. In addition to the case faculty who were scholars and experts in their fields, I truly enjoyed networking with other students, practitioners and educators. Like me, they were seeking to improve nursing education and transform healthcare. I was so appreciative for the opportunity to take my intensive doctoral classes with friends and colleagues while still managing to my career and family life. Travel to Cleveland three times a year for a thoughtful and stimulating week was an easy 90 minute car ride, except of course, during January snowstorms. I have practiced nursing throughout my entire adult life and it has always been a goal to have a vision. We all get caught up with daily issues and urgent matters, and it often becomes very difficult to sustain the focus. Yet that vision has maintained my excitement for our wonderful profession for over 30 years. Creating impact has been equally important. Early on as a practicing nurse at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, providing a camp experience for my patients with cystic fibrosis allowed them to be regular kids without the stigma and emphasis on their physical needs. Later, as an educator at Youngstown State University, providing guidance with research proposals, grassroots simulation, and unique clinical environments resulted in student enthusiasm to improve the health outcomes for those who live in our needy community. International travel and viewing the plight of those living abroad offered realism for our students. Two years ago, I organized a small nursing faculty student group that traveled to the Galilee Medical Center in Israel, a large medical center located on the Lebanese border. We witnessed the care of injured Syrian children, victims of war who were smuggled into the country in Israel for medical and nursing care. Our students learned the impact of their role is not to just care for one, but to do their part to repair the world. Mostly though, my case education influenced my leadership role. Nothing pleases me more than to see the success of others as they work collaboratively to create points of pride. Creating a faculty research group, planning the evening of research with our Sigma chapter, walking as a group to support breast cancer care, building the Masternik Simulation Lab, expanding programs and gaining approval for the DNP are just a few that demonstrate dedication, success, and positive recognition. Our alumni and faculty have emerged as excellent practitioners, educators, leaders, and researchers. Our YSU nursing footprint, especially from our faculty, consistently moves forward. There are many people to thank, including my colleague and friend, Dr. Cindy Shields, for nominating me for this most prestigious recognition. Thank you to those faculty at Francis Payne Bolton who influenced my success, including Dr. Susie Luddington, who taught me the nuts and bolts of a research proposal in her very memorable style, and Dr. Marilyn Lotus for her guidance and advisement. 
A special thanks to our case nursing leaders who consistently pave the way for us to have influence in the healthcare arena. Many thanks to my YSU family of nursing faculty and staff, to our academic leadership, and to those special people who have supported and encouraged my role. To my cherished family and friends, thank you for your ongoing interest. And most importantly, a special thank you to my loving husband, Barry, and to my children, Kenny, Brad, and Brooke. Without your encouragement and love, my path would have undoubtedly taken a different turn. I look forward to our family future. Keep reminding me to shut down my computer and enjoy the beach. Thanks to all for this most important, wonderful life moment. Congratulations, Nancy, on receiving the Francis Payne Bolton Alumni Award for Excellence. I'm so proud of you, and it is an award which is well-deserving. I'm so grateful for our friendship and the opportunity to witness firsthand your dedication and desire for excellence in both your teaching and your administration. What a true gift for the YSU Nursing Department to have you, Nancy, as our excellent leader. Once again, congratulations. It's always exciting to hear about the journey students have taken since graduation. Nancy Wagner was an experienced, accomplished nurse educator when I met her as a DNP student. Since then, she's continued to innovate, create, and inspire her students, fellow faculty, patients she's encountered, and me. As a Fulbright scholar in Lebanon, I saw firsthand the wrath of the Syrian war. And I appreciate the experience Nancy was able to provide for her faculty student group. As always, I learn more from my students than I teach them. And Nancy was no exception. Nancy, I congratulate you on this well-deserved honor. In this year of the nurse, you are a great example of nursing at its best. Congratulations, Dr. Nancy Wagner, on receiving our alumni award. I have very fond memories of you in the research course in which you went to the board and you wrote out each essential piece of the research proposal and how well you took the constructive criticism, which is so common in that class, and persevered to get everything absolutely perfect. I am sure those same sterling qualities have led to you deserving this wonderful award and congratulations and I'm very happy for you. Dr. Susie Ludington. Bye-bye. Dr. Judy Davidson, DNP, Class of 2008, is an evidence-based practice and research nurse liaison at the University of California, San Diego Health, Education, Development, and Research, and is the editor of the Journal of Nursing Management. Though known for her work with family-centered care, and biomedical ethics, Judy's life shifted when nurses in her own organization have died of suicide. She began a quest to study the incidence of nurse suicide, risk factors, and the characteristics of the events. Simultaneously, she developed and tested a model for prevention of nurse suicide derived from what physicians had done before. This program has been sustained for four years and is now endorsed by the ANA as a model for suicide prevention in nursing. Her research continues during this coronavirus pandemic and offers evidence-based steps that facilities can implement to prevent and treat nurses with suicidal ideation. Quoted in the April 2020 issue of the American Heart Association News, Dr. Davidson said, the stress is probably a hundred times what you could have imagined it was in the past. Delivering psychological support to healthcare workers will be as crucial as providing the protective gear. She is currently co-chairing the American Nurses Association Strength Through Resilience Task Force. The task force is collating suicide prevention resources and resources to protect the mental health of nurses during COVID-19. From 2016 to 2020, she has been 
or is currently involved with no less than nine research projects on a wide variety of topics. Dr. Tom Ortel, DMP, graduate of 2010, stated in his nomination letter, I have known Dr. Judy Davidson for many years. What has impressed me most about her research and her career is that she has focused on the person, the family, the humanity of each nurse interaction. She looks at the distress and hardship of clinical nursing, particularly now during this pandemic. Judy's nursing research has an important place in the healing art of nursing. Dr. Davidson is, I believe, the quintessential nurse scientist. Please welcome Dr. Judy Davidson, DNP, class of 2008, recipient of the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing Alumni Association Distinguished Alumni Award. Hello everybody and good evening. I would like to thank Dr. Tom Ortel from the San Diego DMP cohort for his nomination for this award. The nominating committee for receipt of the award, my family for their enduring support over all these years as I've pursued each of my career dreams and the professors from Case Western Reserve University who shared their knowledge with us during our time together to enhance our careers. I'd really like to uh, call out two professors, even though I could um, speak to each and every one and what they've uh, done to help us in our time um, as students at Case. First is Dr. Liz Madigan, whose curriculum course changed the way I've taught forever. Um, when I was done with that program, I had to throw out all of my lectures and start from scratch, building curriculum with person-centered approaches to learning and interactive content. And then Dr. Debbie Lindell, whose theory class really awakened me and stimulated me to write a mid-range theory as my DNP project. That theory, Facilitated Sensemaking, can be found on nurseology.net. It was endorsed by the Society of Critical Care Medicine as just one way of organizing uh, your work around family-centered care. I hear from nurses from around the world about the way they've used the, um, the, the theory as an underpinning for their projects to advance family-centered care. So that's been very rewarding. But as you know, my work has shifted towards suicide and suicide prevention. And right now, during pandemic, we are at an increased risk of suicide. Nurses, as I found in my research, are at higher risk of suicide at baseline than the general pub public. But now, pandemics cause anxiety, stress, um, panic, depression, and increased suicidality. If we do nothing, there will be an increase in suicide over this next year. So my plea to you is to use the evidence-based approaches that have been documented in the literature to reduce our risk. Mindfulness, mindfulness-based stress reduction, cognitive-based therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy type skills building, um, peer support programs, code lavender, second victim response teams, emotional burst eaters, and intentional acts of kindness. Screening for nurses to detect nurses at risk and move them into treatment. Our screening program at UCSD is ready for replication. We've uh, put it on now for four years, very successfully identifying nurses who need help. So all in all, um, right now, be kind to each other, kinder than you've ever been before. Take care of yourselves engage in evidence-based stress reduction practices, recognize your colleagues who are suffering and give them a moment of your kindness, and then recognize those who are in crisis and help move them into treatment. With that, I'll say good night and thank you once again for this award. Hi, Judy. Congratulations, it is well-deserved. You show us that nursing research is not mysterious. Your large body of research deals with important clinical human questions, such as prevention of PTSD in the families of ICU patients, and most recently, the prevention of nurse suicide. 
You are a great role model. And again, congratulations, my friend. I'm Kate Moore, and I am thrilled to congratulate my friend, Judy Davidson, on her award as the recipient of our Distinguished Alumni Award. I've known Judy for a number of years through our work with the Society of Critical Care Medicine, where Judy is not only a Jedi Knight Fellow of Critical Care Medicine, she is also a Jedi Master of Critical Care Medicine. It is an honor and a privilege to congratulate Judy for this very well-deserved award. Congratulations, my friend. Greetings from Indianapolis and Sigma Theta Tau. I'm Liz Madigan, and I am delighted to congratulate Dr. Judy Davidson on this alumni award. Judy, you've done great work since you were my student, and I'm very proud of the hard work you've done to surface this important issue of nurse suicide and actually alternatives to what we can do to help support our staff. Especially during this time of COVID-19, where we have a hugely impacted staff, this is even more important. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you and congrats. Marion Kilker Shaughnessy's vision for an academy to prepare nurse leaders was born of her own experience as a nurse, which has spanned bedside to boardroom. She saw that nurses were in positions to make changes, but often were not empowered or prepared to make those changes. In 1985, Marion graduated from the master's program here at the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing. She developed the idea of a nurse leadership academy years later, while completing her Doctorate of Nursing Practice degree at FPB. During Marion's time as a DMP student, she wrote a paper describing her vision for leadership in nursing. In a very short time, following her doctorate graduation in 2017, individual and institutional partners quickly gathered behind her vision to establish the Marion K. Shaughnessy Nurse Leadership Academy at her alma mater, one of the nation's top leadership destinations. In her interview with Nurse Leader Magazine, Marion said, Now is the time to empower nurses, especially at the executive level, to make those health care changes system-wide. They need to be given the best education and equipped with the best leadership skills to be the voice for the patients and families they represent. When the united voice is heard in the boardrooms and in the legislative halls, nurses can revolutionize our health care system. The Marion K. Shaughnessy Nurse Leadership Academy was created to develop and support a new generation of leaders in nursing, to prepare them to be involved in the design, planning, management, and delivery of care, and then in the development and implementation of health policy. This award, the Francis Payne Bolton Legacy Award, honors individuals for their contributions to the school, the profession of nursing, and the community at large in the spirit of Frances Payne Bolton, healthcare advocate, philanthropist, congresswoman, and namesake of the School of Nursing. I can't think of anyone more deserving of this award than Marion Shaughnessy. Her passing in February 2020 was difficult for all of us. She was a person who was loved and admired by her family, friends, and colleagues. We are so grateful for her leadership in the field of nursing. Marion foresaw the need for empowering nurses, a need that increases now more than ever with each passing day. Her legacy lives on in the great work of the Marion K. Shaughnessy Nurse Leadership Academy, and the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing is committed to continuing her vision of creating, supporting, and advocating for nurse leadership. I'm Barbara Snyder, President Emerita of Case Western Reserve University. It is my great privilege to congratulate Marion's family on this honor for her. From her work as a traveling nurse in Colorado and Alaska to her leadership on hospital and nursing boards, Marion's commitment to health care was as profound as it was unwavering. An essential part of that commitment was her recognition of the critical role of education for nurses. During her own doctoral program, Marion developed the idea of a leadership academy dedicated to giving nurses the knowledge and skills they need to help transform healthcare. Two years ago, she and her husband Michael made a $5 million gift to turn that idea into a reality. The academy's graduates will benefit patients, the nursing profession, and healthcare delivery for decades to come. They are an enormous part of Marion's legacy and we are deeply grateful to be part of it. Thank you, 
And again, congratulations. Accepting the Francis Payne Bolton Legacy Award on behalf of the Shaughnessy family is Dr. Joyce Fitzpatrick, Director of the Marion K. Shaughnessy Nurse Leadership Academy. I am pleased to accept this award on behalf of Marion and her family, her husband, Mike, and daughters, Anne and Kate. I have no doubt that Marion is with us today, smiling down upon us, graciously thanking the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing Alumni Association and Dean Musel for the nomination of her for this award. Leadership is the capacity to turn vision into reality. Marion Shaughnessy, a leader, turned her vision into reality. We should all rejoice for her vision was so direct, so charged, so unwavering, and so empowering. Importantly, Marion cared deeply about people, and she cared deeply about nurses and nursing. As many of you know, Marion and I were close professional colleagues, forever planning what could be to actualize Marion's vision for nurses to lead healthcare. She was the creative spirit. She forever asked, why not? She pushed the boundaries as if there were no boundaries. She taught all of us to fully embrace the belief that we could make the Case Western Reserve University motto, think beyond the possible, the reality for nursing and healthcare. When we established the mission of the Marion K. Shaughnessy Nurse Leadership Academy, to create FPB as the leadership destination, we were bold in the design of the various programs and projects. In Marion's spirit, we will continue this bold journey. In a recent interview with Marion, published in Nurse Leader in June 2020, Marion recounted her early experiences as a nurse, describing her nursing challenges from Maine to Alaska and back. She credited these early experiences in nursing care with teaching her to seize the opportunity to lead. And lead, she did. We are grateful for her leadership and on her behalf, I accept this award as a recognition of her leadership. I would like to share with you a video that Marion especially liked, a video about leadership from the Priorities for Life series. Marion and I shared it with our students in the leadership classes, and I think you will agree that many of the messages here exemplify the messages of Marion K. Shaughnessy. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Kate Judge, Executive Director of the American Nurses Foundation. And on behalf of the foundation and all the ANA enterprise, I want to congratulate Marianne's immediate and extended family on this award and this occasion. And I want to congratulate the School of Nursing for having such a brilliant and dedicated nurse and alumna in Marion Kilker Shaughnessy. I can't think of a better linking of legacies between Francis Payne Bolton and Marion Kilker Shaughnessy. I had the opportunity to see Marion up close, to experience her intelligence, her passion, her insistence, and her true generosity. And all of us who knew her and loved her are linked to her legacy forever, most especially the School of Nursing and now Francis Payne Bolton. Congratulations, I wish I could be with you tonight. Michael, Katie, and Anne, it's my honor to be with you today as Marion receives the Francis Payne Bolton Legacy Award. Her vision for nursing leadership began as early as our time together in our master's program. She always felt nurses had the centerpiece role in the care team that provided hope and support to all patients and their families. The creation of the Nursing Institute brought that vision to life. It's my honor to have been her colleague and even more importantly, to have been her friend. Hello, this is Dr. Margaret Fitzgerald, proud FPB DNP alum from the class of 2006. What do I think of when I think of Mary Ann Shaughnessy? I recall so much. First, this is a woman who is a great philanthropist whose considerable gift to FPB School of Nursing will help carry on her legacy. A tremendous role model for those of us in nursing about how to be a philanthropist, how to plan, how we want to be remembered. And her founding of the Marian Shaughnessy Nurse Leadership Academy is nothing short of visionary. I think of her as a person who had achieved much and had seen how relationships in the healthcare world were largely transactional and interpersonal and wanted to help awaken the leader inside of every single nurse so that our great profession is at the table and not on the menu. A strategist who chose to work with that dynamo, Dr. Joyce Fitzpatrick, the person to which I don't think anyone can ever say no to, of putting together the Shaughnessy Leadership Academy and bringing this to its birth, its first of a kind initiative in the world. She, Marion Shaughnessy is also a gracious hostess whose hospitality is nothing short of impeccable. There is a passage from Luke in the Old Testament, it quoted by President Kennedy a number of times. In fact, it's widely quoted. And it states that for everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. We have been given much by knowing Dr. Mary Ann Shaughnessy by seeing her vision, being inspired by what it is she has done. But what often gets forgotten is there's a second part of that passage. And it is this, from one who has been, from one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Dr. Shaughnessy, I want to thank you for entrusting us with fulfilling your legacy and congratulations on your receipt of the FPB Legacy Award. Congratulations to all of our award winners. At this time, I would like to give special recognition to our FPB 1970 class members celebrating their 50th reunion this year. We regret that they are unable to join us in person this year, but we are hoping they can do so next year. If we were to go back in time 50 years ago, we would find that President Richard Nixon signed the Public Health Cigarette Smoking Act into law, which banned cigarette television ads in the United States. Paul McCartney announced that the Beatles were breaking up. Apollo 13 with Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert was launched toward the moon. 
the first Earth Day was celebrated in the United States. A gallon of gas was only 36 cents. The legal voting age was lowered to 18. Medical researchers pioneered the PET scan. The U.S. named its first female generals, Anna Mae Hayes and Elizabeth P. Hoisington. And, quite poignantly, one of the top songs for the year was Bridge Over Troubled Water by Simon and Garfunkel. Here on campus, Dr. Rosella Schlotfeldt was FPB's dean. Also reflecting national trends, Student protests erupted on campus several times. The largest demonstration blocked the intersection of Euclid and Adelbert Roads. And finally, 50 years ago this year, the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing graduated a bright new class of nurses ready to take on the profession and the world. They were the class of 1970. I am honored to mail each member of this class a pin that was created especially for alumni celebrating 50 or more reunion years as a nurse. I hope that we will be able to see you on campus next year so that we can celebrate with you in person. Congratulations. Patricia Beam will now provide closing remarks. Thank you, Dean Musa. Today has been a wonderful example of what being an FPB alum means. Thank you for joining us in this very special celebration of our award winners and of each of you, our alumni community.